Do you want to learn how to make images like this? Well, meet the Camera Obscura, aka a pinhole camera. Camera Obscuras are the simplest form of photography, featuring a light safe container and a tiny hole for light to enter, which then projects an inverted image onto your film. Historically, these have been used as tools for things like drawing or astronomy and weren't even used for photographic purposes until 1824. Fast forward to 2025, pinhole cameras are a fun and easy way to try out experimental photographic methods right at home. So let's get started. First, choose your container. This can really be any container that you're able to make 100% light safe. Paint or soda cans are popular options, so I have these here, but I'll also be making a third one in a box. You'll need to paint the inside of your container black to ensure that no additional light is absorbed or reflecting around, which I already prepared for you all. Next, we need to make our lens. Here, I'll use a nail to poke a tiny hole in the middle of the can. The diameter of this will determine your aperture, so keep that in mind. If you want a variety, you can cut a larger hole and create multiple lenses to switch out. I also created a shutter with a piece of gaff tape that will keep closed until we want to expose our image. So before you load your film, we first need to do a bit of math to determine our f-stop. F numbers will equal the focal length, aka the distance between the pinhole and your film, divided by the diameter of our lens. So for example, the paint can, the length is 6.5 inches, but for the soda can, that's only two inches. I did use the same nail to make the pinhole diameter, and that was about 0.79 millimeters, making the paint can f-stop 209, but the soda can f-stop f64. For the box camera, the length was 11.5 inches. The pinhole diameter I used a tack to make, so it's a little bit bigger at 1.588 millimeters, resulting in an f184 aperture. Now we need to load our film. You can use traditional negatives like we are here with some 4x5 sheet film, but some people also opt to use darkroom paper since it's a bit easier to handle and it has an incredibly low ISO. Whichever you choose, you'll need to load these in a light safe room and place them on the opposite side of your lens. Again, make sure that your container is totally light safe, including the lens before you take it out. So now the fun part, making our images. To determine our exposure, I usually use a light meter app for convenience, but because we have an insanely small aperture, these exposures can range from a few minutes to a few hours, and some people even leave them up for days. I encourage you to be really experimental here and see what works for you. All right, so we've been shooting with these cameras for a few weeks now, and we have some film back from the darkroom, so let's reflect on the pinhole photo process. So right off the bat, this photographic medium was a joy to work with. It really brings you back to the basics of how an image is made. And I've always appreciated the analog style. It really forces you to chill out, slow down, and carefully think about the image you're about to make. I mean, if your SD card could only take one photo at a time, you'd probably take a little bit more time to think about the shot in question. But with most good things, there do come a few challenges, so let's talk about some of the obstacles with the photo process, with the first being loading the film. Now, since we don't have access to an official darkroom, we had to find a way to load our cameras in a light-safe environment. And after considering our options and a little trial and error, I eventually landed on this. Okay, I know this looks a little bit crazy, but stay with me here. Our b &H studio is windowless, which gets us most of the way there, but there's also a lot of lights from our chargers, outlets, smoke detectors, etc., etc. So we ended up using a dark cloth over a ladder to create like a mini loading room in our studio. And hey, if it works, it works. The next obstacle I ran into was the design of the box and soda can cameras, which were new designs for me. One thing that I failed to consider was the thickness of the cardboard box for our lens, which gave me sort of a spotlight effect for the first image. Kind of cool, but not exactly what we were going for. This was a super easy fix though, using a bit of aluminum for the lens instead, and that worked perfectly. One hiccup for the soda can was that I needed to be very diligent in gaff taping it closed. This resulted in a couple of blank frames, which I believe were from light leaks over time. The third time was a charm though, where I got this kind of dreamy overexposed image, meaning it was in fact working. So I tried it one more time and I did end up getting a correctly exposed image of the park here. I also did get this underexposed haunted image uh, starring my cat Fuego, which was also pretty cool, but not exactly what we were looking for. <laughs> so moving on to our MVP of the pinhole cameras, the paint camera. 
So this was the most reliable, which was unsurprising to me. This has been my favorite for quite some time for pinhole cameras as it's really light tight and bonus points for being super easy to load. I mean, seriously, I just taped the film inside of it and then kind of tapped it shut. The paint can has also a more normal focal length as well, making it a bit easier to visualize your image before taking it. Sometimes with the more telephoto options like the box, the image was way more zoomed in than I had imagined, so that's just something to consider. So that just about wraps up our time with the camera obscuras, but let us know in the comments below what is the wackiest thing you have made a pinhole camera out of. I'm Sam with B&H, and I'll see you next time.